In what appears to be pretty blatant clickbait, CNBC has decided to declare that there is a gender problem in cryptocurrency, because seemingly there are too few female traders within crypto. I'm going to go through why this is a really daft concept and why, in fact, this problem is really a non-problem because it pertains to freedom of choice and people can voluntarily choose to trade crypto or not. And there are no barriers to entry because anyone can set up a trading account. So the underlying premise behind this article makes no sense. Nevertheless, it's worth going through this and dissecting it just because this stupidity keeps coming up and it's worth taking it apart. So with that out of the way, let's have a look at the CNBC article and go through why it's wrong. So here we are on CNBC and we have our rather clickbaity title. Cryptocurrency investing has a big gender problem. Big gender problem indeed. It says here, twice as many men as women invested in cryptocurrency, according to CNBC and Acorn's Invest in You. Next Gen Invest survey conducted in partnership with Momentive. The crypto gender gap exceeds the existing gap with traditional investments including stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, and real estate. Cryptocurrencies include Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin have been promoted as a way to democratize a traditionally walled-off finance field and increase investor diversity. I want to stop here and point out that these key points are moronic. Anyone can open up a Robinhood trading account, and Robinhood is not new. Anyone's been able to open up a brokerage account since time immemorial. So the idea that there were walled-off barriers to entry is nonsensical, particularly in the 2020s or 2010s. The reason I say that is say you go back to the year 2000 or thereabouts, getting access to information about companies was exponentially more difficult than it is now. So one could say back in like 1990, sure it was walled off because getting access to info was tough. Now access to info on companies is a Google search away. You can get it on Yahoo Finance on anywhere really. There are myriad channels talking about myriad different stocks. So the idea that it's walled off is nonsensical. However, it is a narrative that some companies like Robinhood seem to propel in order to try to drive sales, even though it isn't really supported by anything in particular. So it says here, cryptocurrency is a 21st century financial instrument with a very 20th century problem. Not enough women. Twice as many men as women invest in cryptocurrency. 16% of men versus 7% of women, according to CNBC and Acorn's conducted so, a survey. Women are lagging behind men in the rates of cryptocurrency investing, just as they historically have struggled to keep pace with men in more traditional investment vehicles. In fact, the new survey data, uh, in, in fact, in the new survey data, the gender disparity in crypto matches or exceeds the gender gaps in ownership of ETFs, 40% men, 7% of women, individual stocks, 40% of men, 24% of women, mutual funds, 30% of men, 20% of women, Real estate, 36% of men, 30% of women, and bonds, 14% of men, 11% of women. I want to highlight with bonds, however, that's probably a little bit misleading given that many of the bonds are owned by instos, so I don't know that that statistic really makes any sense, given the overwhelming majority of bond ownership is going to be by sophisticated institutional investors. Regardless, we can continue on. It says here, the survey was conducted by CNBC and Acorns by Momentive, the company formerly known as SurveyMonkey from August 4th to 9th, 2021, among more than 5,500 adults in the US, 2,900 of whom have invested have investments in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, or cryptocurrency. So really, we're only looking at the 2,900 here that's actually important for the survey. A, not a massive survey. B, we don't know at this point how they've gotten their, their sample. So that's an issue because with a survey, we can see this with political surveys. You just choose your sample to suit the narrative that you want. So, for example, there are myriad rubbish surveys that continually are politically biased in, uh, in the politics area because they choose their sample strategically and or reweight things strategically. So one does need to bear that in mind when interpreting these surveys. They say here, democratizing investing and gender. Gender disparities have dogged the financial services industry for decades, but cryptos like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin have, a, have been promoted as a way to democratize a traditionally walled off field. No, they haven't. Welcoming new and more diverse investors into the fold. Only about one in 10 people in the US currently invest in crypto. Then why is it promoted as democratizing investment if only one in 10 people are doing it? But so far, the industry has not been able to make inroads among the key demographic group of women. 
That's especially confounding because in other significant ways, crypto is really living up to the hype of leveling the playing field. Crypto is the only financial vertical that has a higher participation rate among younger adults, younger adults than older adults. 15% of those 18 to 34 years old own cryptocurrencies compared to 11% of those ages 35 to 64, and 4% of those who are 65 or older. Even more interesting is that people of all races are about equally likely to own crypto. 11% of whites, 11% of blacks, 10% of Hispanics, 14% of Asians, 10% of any other race have crypto investments. Even though cryptocurrency has broken down barriers to investing by race, it hasn't managed to do the same by gender. Then black women face the highest investing barriers. This is more or less a continuation of what they have previously said, so we'll just largely be repeating ourselves if I go over this. So, so far we're seeing a claim of a gender disparity in crypto. There are some significant problems with this claim, however. So let's go through dissecting this. And this is even assuming the survey holds up. And I want to say here there's a big caveat. We don't really know how accurate this survey really is, because a lot of the accuracy, like I've indicated, can come down to how they construct their sample and then how they reweight the observations within that sample to make up for the fact they might not have surveyed everyone equally. So that's an issue that we need to bear in mind, but I'll leave that to a side for the moment and take as given the survey results. The first major issue is that investing in cryptos or anything else is a choice. It is a voluntary choice. There is no barrier to women going out and investing in cryptos. Like I've said, you can open up a crypto trading account and there are many, many, many of them. No one is stopping women opening up a trading account. No one is standing there constructing a wall to prevent investment. This means that the concept of there being a gender disparity is artificial here because we are referring to a free choice. For example, statistically, men are more likely to go out and buy Lamborghinis. Now, one can argue from Lamborghini's perspective, they might want more women to go out and buy their stuff. But no one's preventing a woman from going out and buying one of these cars. So it's the same basic logic here. There's voluntary choice to go and buy something, which means that the whole idea of a gender barrier or gender disparity is really not analogous to that of, say, historically in the workforce, where go back decades, there were barriers to women entering particular jobs. Crypto doesn't have those barriers, and therefore the whole idea of there being a gender problem is really a complete non sequitur here. It doesn't make any sense when people are voluntarily choosing not to buy crypto. And if women don't want to buy crypto, then a crypto purveyor might be interested in, why is it the women are not interested in buying crypto or haven't been at least in this survey, they might be interested in identifying this. That, however, is not a gender problem. That's a sales and marketing issue that needs to be addressed. It's important to get our language here correct, because when we're talking about a gender problem, it means that it tends to imply there needs to be some form of regulatory intervention, because whenever people start talking about problems, they oftentimes seem to feel the need to bring in some form of regulatory intervention to level the playing field, which in this case is nonsensical. And that's the first thing. Second thing is that this article clearly has underlying assumptions that don't necessarily hold up. The article writer is basically assuming here that if you don't invest in crypto, then there's something weird or wrong with you. They're basically saying the decision to not invest in crypto is a problem and needs to be addressed. But is it really a problem? Like, is it really a problem that women have decided, seemingly according to this survey, to not invest in crypto? Put differently, the article writer is imposing their assumptions onto investors. They are assuming that because people don't invest in the way that they think is normal, there's something wrong with that person. That is inherently problematic as well. Maybe it's the case that women run a different trading strategy. We can only speculate because they don't say this in the survey. Maybe it's the case that for whatever reason, they've just gone down a different path of trying to seek out returns. There's nothing wrong with seeking out different returns. If those uh, actions generate higher returns per unit of risk than investing in crypto, then in fact, the problem here is that too many men are investing in crypto. If one is thinking that crypto is really perhaps just speculative, then maybe the problem is not that women are being excluded as that too many men are being lured into shit coins. Maybe that's the question. They need to consider more fundamentally what the problem group is here. And 
whether or not we really need to assume that people need to invest in crypto. Because that really is not necessarily the case. And it's an assumption that needs to be tested, given the sheer number of people who don't invest in crypto. I think that's important for them to actually go and analyze. The third aspect of it is, again, harking back to whether there's a problem. Cryptocurrency is inherently quite risky. One can argue about whether crypto is the future or not. But what we all can establish is cryptocurrency is very volatile. It also has high skewness and high ketosis. And there's potentially quite a high tail risk, particularly in shit coins, which often tank. But even in things like Bitcoin, it's highly volatile. And we've seen that throughout 2021, for example. What this survey might be showing is that maybe men are willing to take on more risk than women in this context. Now, I am very reticent to stereotype, and I do not want to necessarily ascribe that any gender will take on more risk necessarily. I think it's important to consider people on their individual merits. Some women take on risk, some women don't, similarly with men. And I think the individual characteristics of a person are demonstrably more important than what category you assign them into. Nevertheless, maybe their survey results are showing that, we, that men take on more risk. The question is then, is that a good thing or not? It doesn't necessarily mean there's a gender problem with investing in crypto. Rather, it's showing a different facet, which is risk-taking and risk appetite. That could be what the survey is showing, rather than a gender problem per se. So those are three underlying issues that I have with this report. And most of these are normative and assume that the report is accurate in its reporting. I.e., there's a problem with saying that a free choice to not invest is a problem when people can freely choose to invest in crypto if they want to do so, because no one is erecting a barrier to stop people. There's the issue that this journalist appears to be assuming that just because people don't behave in the way that they would like that there's a problem with them, or just because they don't behave in the way that they think an investor generally behaves, there's a problem. Women might not be demonstrating a problem here. It could be a sensible decision to not be investing in a highly speculative asset class. Maybe that's the decision that is better. And in that case, the whole premise of the article is completely wrong to my mind. And linking onto this, it could also be showing in this survey that men statistically in this survey had a higher risk appetite. Again, I'm very reticent to stereotype here because I would prefer to consider individuals on the individual characteristics and traits specific to that person rather than just what broad category people want to shoehorn them into. So that's CNBC's latest piece of clickbait. It is pretty rubbish, but it was interesting anyway. If you have any thoughts about the article, let me know that in the comments below. And otherwise, of course, it'd be great if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully I'll see you for future videos as well. Bye.